cool um so hello everyone and welcome to cube day japan and <clears throat> we'll start the session now secure and debuggable uh, debugging claim slim scratch distress kubernetes containers a lot of terminologies over here we'll try to um, you know simplify all these and see how you can debug it so expected background, um, as uh, you know, Kyle mentioned, um, some of the container fundamentals is needed. You should know what Kubernetes is, you know, uh, the basic knowledge, namespaces, fundamentals, architecture, nodes, and all these things. And then we'll cover the rest of the stuff. So this is about me. Uh, I'm working as director of technical evangelism at CIVO, and uh, I'm a CNC ambassador, uh, very active on Twitter. Uh, and also have a YouTube channel, so you can kind of follow me everywhere. I might reply you in between the session as well, so. And I'm the uh, Docker Slim guy, so <laughs> keep going. Okay, so the next slide. So this is pretty much one of the best ways to describe the problem using minimal container images. You wanna use them but you can't a lot of times because uh, you need to debug them. And up until pretty much now, Kubernetes 1.25, it was one of those things on the wish list. And uh, you couldn't do it. Well, you could do it the hard way, but in terms of mass adoption, it wasn't possible because to use smaller containers, you still need that debuggability. And this is what we're gonna talk about. And apparently, you know, there's a lot of interest in it. So let's uh, keep going. So let's get started with the general debugging techniques for for Kubernetes, which everybody, like, we have been doing it. Uh, just a quick preview of that. So whenever there's any failures, uh, we go through the events, uh, the logs, the describe, uh, host and node level debugging. So we SSH into that, uh, use privileged containers, um, use some embedded debugging tooling. Um, also the kubectl exec, which is pretty common. If you want to get inside the container, you use kubectl exec, go inside and do a bunch of stuff to see what went wrong. And then some sidecar stuff, uh, which is there. So yeah, this is some of the stuff. Like if you do kubectl describe, you can see the, you know, the events, like if a pod is pending, insufficient resources, um, so all these you'll get. And if you have a crash loop back off, you can do kubectl logs. And sometimes you have to do, uh, you can also attach that hyphen hyphen previous so that you can get uh, the logs from the previous container to see what failed. Uh, it's useful. And then the exec one, the kubectl exec interactive uh, pod and the uh, bash or sh whatever is there inside that particular container that you can attach to and run the uh, commands with the debugging utilities. So let's uh, let's actually see that in the action. So I do have some of the files. Kubectl. We'll try to apply the pending pod one. So this is just I have taken from uh, Robusta. They have some good examples. So you can see the pod is already in pending. I can describe that and we can see that, uh, you know, it's not there because uh, didn't match the pods node affinity. So when you describe, sometimes it helps, it will give you the useful information that you can fix it and then, you know, use that. Similar to that, uh, another one example that I have is crash loop. So it's content, so it's already crash loop back off. Uh, you can see that there is a pod uh, which crash looped and I can see the logs for that. So environment variable is undefined. So. So these are standard and very simple um, to use the, the first level of the basics that you have to go through whenever you are debugging a container. So the describe, um, the logs, the exec, the events, and all these things. So this gives you a, a bit of gist of uh, how uh, you know you do debug it now. 
uh, over the time, what has happened is um, we have moved to, like we have been creating the containers, but now we have moved, uh, we want to move to slimmer images to, you know, uh, the images which contains less so that, you know, we have less secure, vulnerability, less uh, vulnerabilities in that and the image size is less. So with that, there are some concepts, uh, scratch, distroless and slim. What are these? So scratch image is basically an empty image. It has nothing in it. Uh, it is used to run the binaries, which don't have anything linked to that. Uh, I mean, yeah, there are some gotchas that we'll be covering later on. Uh, mostly you go have... or rust, apps are like that. Right? Go or rust. So not everything that you can run with that. So it is a compiled uh, binary, which is there uh, that have no dependencies. And if it has the dependencies that probably you have to know all the linked dependencies and you have to, you know, manually uh, get that because it, it doesn't even have the, like you can see the CA certs, ETC password, nothing is there. So you have to uh, make all the things up um, in the multi-stage builds and then you can run it. Yeah, th also, that, that's where it gets complicated. That's where it gets complicated. Uh, coming to distroless. So distroless is not completely empty. Uh, it has some of the base directories, uh, which helps you in creating the containers and running them. Um, it has like ETC password, CA certs. It has the app plus the runtime dependencies. Both of these have no shell and no package manager. So that's where it becomes tricky, right? Uh, these are good to have, but these are only good to have if you have everything sorted. Like if you know your container won't fail, but if your container fails, then probably since it has no shell package manager, it becomes difficult to debug these set of containers. And that's what we'll be discussing and showing you the demos for. So the gotchas, uh, extra dependencies are super complicated. Uh, whenever you have extra dependencies in scratch image, you have to know them uh, beforehand if you even have to run it. No debugging tooling, no shell, uh, and not always a static binary. So this is uh, the, the three apps that we have. Like we have, you can see uh, there is a big image. The size of that is one gigs, uh, pretty big, one gig. And, and it's a simple hello world app and it's already one gigabyte in size. Then you have the distroless app, which is uh, 166, and then you have the node app slim. Okay, so you have a lot of options in terms of uh, how you wanna get to, how you can get to a, a, a minimal container image for your application. Uh, some of them require a lot more work than others. Distroless is probably one of the most known ways um, to get there. Uh, there are several f flavors of Distroless, uh, starting with the most basic static that gives you mostly um, a directory layout and a couple of things on top of that, including uh, the, uh, the zone info. Uh, that's pretty much um, the biggest chunk of that image. And then we have other images, like the next level is the base image, which includes the static version plus a few extra libraries, basic OS libraries. Um, and then uh, you have application-specific uh, distroless uh, versions. Uh, They're much bigger. They include the base plus the additional uh, system libraries and the application runtime. Now. Um, and I'll talk about the gotchas later on. So let's take a look at the uh, distroless app. And all of them, they use the same uh, Kubernetes manifest for the application, but the Docker file for them is a little different. Uh, so, but this uh, Docker file, one of the interesting things about it is, is that what you end up with, you might have a multi-stage um, build, and then in the final stage, you copy stuff to your um, deployable image. Now. Uh, in most cases, you end up with those kind of copies where you copy a whole directory with things because otherwise you, you're not really sure what you're doing. So, so that, that's okay. It's better than uh, using a, a fat image, but you still have a lot of attack surface left in the image when you do that. Let's keep going. Um, so this is an example for those compiled languages because sometimes, you know, with Go, 
the first thing that comes to mind is static binaries, a single binary. You can easily create a, a scratch-based um, application image, and that's pretty much it. In reality, for real applications, real-world applications, you actually have extra dependencies, certificates, user information, and in some cases, it's not even compiled statically. So this, um, let's see, okay. Yeah, let's let's keep going. Um, so in this case, I, this is a sample app for Docker Slim, one of the third-party apps, and it's not compiled statically. So we end up pulling stuff like lib p thread, uh, shared objects, etc. So there's a lot of stuff that gets pulled in, and that's when it gets tricky when you're trying to do it the hard way, build those minimal uh, container images by hand. So let's keep going. So with the, uh, with the slim image, uh, the nice thing about it is that you have a regular Docker file. This is probably the most basic node application Docker file. It's not multi-stage, it's simple, derives from your uh, node base image. You copy the, uh, the package manifest, you install the dependencies, you copy the app, and then you just run the app. That's all. Now, that's all you would have for a regular app, and then with the slim images, it takes that, and then it produces a, a much smaller image, kind of like an out of scratch. Uh, it does it for you. So let's keep going. So now uh, we have discussed what slim image is, what distroless is, what scratch image is, and we have discussed some of the toolings. But I mentioned one particular point that it, it's hard to debug the distroless and slim and scratch images due to the lack of uh, shell and debugging tools within that. Uh, so we cannot use the standard stuff, which is kubectl, exec, cp, embedded debugging tools, because it's not there. So uh, then it becomes difficult. And kubectl, cp, just it requires a tar to be there uh, in the container, else it will fail. Um, and it copies files from the directory. Exec needs a shell to be there and debugging utilities like htop, curl, etc., the net stat, whatever you need. These are not there. These are the standard ones. Um, and if you try to do that over any of the images of distroless or scratch, you'll end up in getting uh, the error that it is not able to process that because the shell is not there. So it won't be able to uh, run. You won't be able to do the standard um, easy debugging that you are used to. So that's where uh, we have the concept of ephemeral containers. So ephemeral containers are the containers to help uh, debug the pods where there is no way to debug directly using exec. So what happens is uh, it is when you write a pod, it will you like you will be using kubectl debug to create those ephemeral containers and it attaches the in the live pod state itself you will have a pod in the spec section, pod spec section, there will be a container that will be added and it will also auto update the container statuses with ephemeral container status. So that's the very good thing. And it attaches to the container to the same pod, share the namespaces so you have that same process. You will be able to see uh, the process of a distroless or a, you know that particular container itself and you can have the file view as well that will show you. Uh, some of the things to be taken care, it, it doesn't have any readiness, liveness, uh, probes, uh, the resources are not allowed uh, on that. Um, and you can create it using the ephemeral containers API. Kyle will show the demo for that a as well. question for you. Why not uh, use regular containers? Why can't you just add a regular container to, the, to your pod? So uh, again, adding a regular container won't help because uh, it, you you have to add that and you, uh, the mounting becomes the issue, the process ID, the sharing of a namespace, all these things won't happen. Um, so that is where the ephemeral containers will help in basically not touching the existing uh, pod, not restarting the existing pod. So that stays there, your application stays there. And if anything goes wrong, you still will be able to debug that. So this is the simple example of like kubectl debug. And let's say there is an Nginx pod running before that. Um, so you are debugging that and you are using the image uh, busy box and you are getting the shell. So what it does it, it is adding a new container with busy box image to that Nginx pod. 
so if you see the like if you get the kubectl get pods hyphen o yaml you will be able to see two sections which are important over here which is ephemeral containers so whenever you do the kubectl debug there will be this section added automatically to that particular pod spec section and also the status the ephemeral container status will keep on getting updated So uh, this is just pod level debugging, same pod, pod copy for advanced debugging. There is one command, which we'll be discussing later. Yeah, and some of it uses ephemeral containers and other stuff doesn't because you don't always need to have ephemeral containers. For example, when you uh, get a pod copy there, you can use a regular container because you know, uh, it's the time when you get to decide. Again, this is a simple kubectl debug demo. Uh, what it is doing, it is creating a container debug sidecar box with the image uh, busy box and attaching to the target container app. It is also like you can see the process over here. So this is the process. Uh, you can see the process one, which is the node application. But the current uh, process for our ephemeral container is uh, 13. And one thing, with, you can see the difference between the the file so it it doesn't look same so your file system uh, won't be exactly the same like when you do a kubectl exec you are into the pod you will be able to see the the exact file system over there but when you are in the ephemeral containers you won't be able to see the exact file system uh, directly yeah and that, that's why you need to go to the proc file system and you need to navigate to the uh, pid uh, you were trying to debug and the root uh, uh, section. And so this is uh, a little odd. If you haven't done this before, this is odd and not great from the debugging experience. And we'll have a demo to address that. So you can also use ephemeral containers without uh, the kubectl debug commands. So you can use the APIs, uh, internal APIs, and you can, that is very interesting because there's a demo that we have to set the security context like if you have to set the security context or if we need any additional mounting uh, which you cannot do by default using the kubectl debug so you have to use kubectl uh, the apis for that the curl examples some of the gotchas uh, you can't remove the ephemeral containers not all container properties are available which we discussed uh, process namespace sharing and uh, the security context and mounting volumes are not there out of the box when you use kubectl debug. So ephemeral containers, like Kyle mentioned, it was uh, a fantasy to use before. Uh, they slim, scratch, and distroless, and there have been a lot of work, effort, and getting this uh, this set of um, you know ephemeral tech, uh, containers support natively into Kubernetes and that happened very recently. So it went in GA 1.25 and you can see uh, like all the local clusters, Rancher desktop or Docker desktop should work. And even the uh, cloud providers, uh, you know, CVO, GK, EKS, they all have 1.23 onwards. So you should be able to use the same uh, demos that we are doing with kubectl debug with those clusters as well. Okay. so. Let's say you want to use uh, kube control debug to debug your um, minimal container image application. So what do you do? You have a few options. You can create your own debugging image, uh, which is kind of this option. You can use a couple of uh, existing um, debugging images. The most popular one uh, is Netshoot. It's a, it's a well-known system and network level debugging image. Lots of great tools there. Then there's also a set of um, debugging images by Lightrun. They're called Cool Kids. They have, uh, they support several runtimes and will use the uh, node runtime. And in the do-it-yourself bucket, one of the nice things that you can use is Nixer. You can build a debugging image on the fly by specifying the, the packages you want, and we'll see it as well. So we'll have um, three demos. Um, we'll uh, look uh, at how to debug a node application, kind of an application level demo, and then a system uh, debugging demo with the S-Trace, and then um, a demo that shows uh, how to m make the debugging experience looks similar to what you used to.
Let's switch. So first of all, in the uh, demo application, the, uh, the make file has a nice menu of different options that you want to use. So we'll start with uh, uh, creating the, uh, uh, the application. And it's this application. Uh, it has a deployment with one pod and the, uh, the demo app image and a service. Okay, so the application is running. And we're using the slim image. Okay, so first we'll try to uh, debug the node application and let's let's try to see that's all it does it's a hello world app and this is the app itself it has a couple of endpoints and we'll try to debug one of the endpoints. So what can we do? Okay, so I'm gonna use um, a debug, um, a node uh, cool kid image to debug my application. So now I'm connected to the um, uh, debugging sidecar. And I see the application. And again, uh, and this is us. And this is our file system. And this is the file system of the target application. And this is that. So I'll want to use a debugger that I have in my cool kit image. And with Node, the, there's a way to force the application to run in debug mode. And you do that by sending a, a user one signal to it. So now if I switch to the other make get logs. Okay. Now I see that uh, the uh, the node runtime uh, switch to the debug mode and it's listening now I'm connected to the target application I'm gonna pause it I'm gonna set a breakpoint it's gonna take a while there's a delay. Okay. I'm gonna set it on line 13. That's, uh, that's inside of the main um, handler. I'm going to continue. So now I'll want to curl again.
now we hit uh, the breakpoint. So that's an example of how you can use a debug image to do application level debugging. So I'm gonna get out of that. And I'm gonna try uh, another, I'm gonna use S trace to do a lower level debugging session. So now S trace is connected uh, to uh, the node application I have. Now we got a whole bunch of stuff there, including a response right there. We got a response from uh, uh, written from the application. All right, and then I'll try to do the same thing with um, with uh, with a couple of other images. I'll try an X-ray. Now here, if you look at this funny looking, funny looking image name, uh, you'll see that it has a lot of different names in it. And it's the names of the um, packages I installed. For example, LSOF, uh, NatCat, TCP dump, and strace. It takes a, a little bit to pull it because it gets created on the fly. Okay, we have the node application too. And now we get the same uh, result. All right. Okay, so, and the next one is gonna show a, a bit of shell level trickery to make the uh, developer uh, developer experience a little uh, more straightforward. So I'm going to use a busy box uh, debugging image. Okay. All right. Again, we have the same file system problem. So what you want, you want to see the file system over the target app, uh, application image, but you want the tools from your uh, debugging image. So for that, you need to bring those uh, debugging tools into your target uh, uh, namespace. Well, uh, figuratively speaking. I'm gonna copy and paste because I'm really bad with typing. So first, I'm going to link the uh, debugging tools from my debugging container. Then I'll add them to the path. And then I'll change um, uh, the root file system. So now if we do a less, what we see is the file system of the target image container with the debugging tools. So now if I, I can run any of those tools there and I can go to user source app. So it looks the same and I can do everything I would do as if I was exacting into the fat version of the application image. So you get the same kind of experience there. Okay. Yeah, so these uh, are also available on GitHub, uh, as Kyle mentioned. Um, so you can try on your own as well. Uh, we got just a one minute left. Uh, so the key takeaways is minimal container images on case are ready for mainstream because of ephemeral containers. Now you have the tooling which exists. So you have seen some of the uh, cool demos using the tools like Nixree, Netshoot, Cools, uh, Coolkits, 
that you can use to debug your uh, slim distro less or scratch containers as well so you can actually now use them for uh, in production so ephemeral containers make it possible to debug scratch slim distro less images uh, thank you and this is the uh, this is the demo repository uh, cube day japan demo and you can try ephemeral containers on Sivo and create a minimal container images using docker slim and then try to do that and shout out to uh, akiro for the nerd ctl and if you have any awesome yeah it's an awesome tool and if you have any queries we uh, we don't have time but we'll be hanging around here so uh, feel free to ask any any questions as well uh, thank you so much for joining it